851, turn right, heading 180. 014 Papa, turn right 245, report localizer established 27. Hey everyone, welcome to DJ's Aviation. The Trent 1000 engines are one engine that without fail have throughout this year constantly been having troubles. These engines, which are fitted onto the Boeing 787 Dreamliners, have meant that a number of 787s, in fact, have actually been grounded for months on end as Rolls-Royce race against the clock to attempt to fix these particular problems. I've taken the time throughout these months to inform you all on the issues and how they've impacted the Boeing 787s and Boeing on a whole, but I've never really taken a look deeply at how Rolls-Royce, the makers of the engine, are being impacted, and that's what I'll be doing in today's video. We'll begin this particular video with the money. To fix a problem means you usually need to have money to fix it. Rolls-Royce do have that, but the amount they are forking out is something that they wouldn't have wanted. Latest figures note that they've taken a 727 million US hit through trying to fix these problems. This was shared at the company's half-year results earlier this month. On top of this, Rolls-Royce note that the total cost for fixing this aircraft over the next three years will actually exceed 1.3 billion US. This is because while the problem is, as Rolls-Royce say, contained, they now need to go about fixing it on the hundreds of engines that are still impacted. And with the outbreak spreading to other packages of the Trent 1000 engines, it is what some could say getting out of hand. What's next? Well, it's the disruption caused to Rolls-Royce customers. The Trent 1000 engines are quite the popular choice among airlines who operate the 787, and in turn a huge number of carriers have been impacted, some more severely than others. We've had groundings, inspections, and so on, all occurring, and while I said at the beginning of the video I'd focus on Rolls-Royce, it is hard to ignore the fact that this does impact airlines' operations, and in turn, they have to go out to the likes of High Fly to try and get aircraft in to help them with the demand. For instance, we have Norwegian, who got in the Airbus A380 from High Fly. Then we have Air New Zealand, who needed the High Fly A340 and Airbus A330, We've also had British Airways looking at the Qatar A330s. So while Rolls-Royce do work against the clock to fix the issues, it simply doesn't change the fact that they are causing a big inconvenience to airlines. Because at the end of the day, engines are engines, and are a very, very important component to flying. You can't fly without engines full stop. If this was, let's say, a problem with a blanket on board or a tray table, another company could be quickly contacted and... A replacement could be found within a matter of hours or at the very least days. This wouldn't in turn impact the airline's operations for the foreseeable future. How does Rolls-Royce plan on fixing this particular problem though? Well, during their press briefing they said, We recently confirmed that we now started certification testing of a redesigned intermediate compressor rotor blade for Trent 1000 Package C engines with a redesign for Trent 1000 Package B engines to follow. This disruption will lead me on to my next point, which is trust. Trust is something that is earned, and is something that can be found everywhere, from our daily lives to even businesses that operate with suppliers and so on. It isn't any different in the airline scene. Airlines trust their suppliers to produce good quality products, so they down the line aren't impacted with groundings or having to cease operations because of a mistake. Incidents like these, while might be out of, let's say, Rolls-Royce's control, can damage relationships or trust. A great way to look at it is like this. You have a favourite place to eat out. You have been eating there for years, and one day, you get a form of food poisoning. It happens again, a month later, at the exact same restaurant, and you have to spend hundreds of dollars on medical bills. That trust with the restaurant is slowly disappearing. The same can be applied to this scenario currently with Rolls-Royce and Airlines. The chief executive of Rolls-Royce commented on how they were dealing with their customers, saying, However, we are working very constructively with each and every one of those customers, on a customer-by-customer, -customer, almost engine-by-engine -engine basis. He also added, Of course we apologise and do regret all the disruption caused to our customers. All of this was communicated to the press at the Rolls-Royce half-year results earlier in the month. So, while Rolls-Royce are certainly going about all the procedures the right way, it still does impact them on some level. 
Despite everything I've been saying, Rolls-Royce do remain confident that they will move through this and do continue to say that they are making steady progress. And all I can say is good luck to them. After everything that has occurred, it does seem like they can't catch a break. This is similar to what's occurring with Pratt and Whitney on the A320neo aircraft. It's safe to say it hasn't been a good year or so in regards to engines and all the problems that have been occurring. Rolls-Royce, despite these troubles, did post an underlying profit of £59 million from the first six months of this year. Additional changes within the business, like the removal of staff, has helped the company reach this goal. I'd like to thank you very much for watching this video of mine, and I do look forward to you all joining me in the next one. And we'll fly.